Good morning, everybody. Welcome. If you are not living under a rock, you have almost certainly heard of Google's new pet project called AlphaCode. Uh, it's a brand new AI. Google made it. And the idea is it will compete in programming contests, the same ones that humans do, where the goal is you're given some logic puzzle or something like that. You have to write a computer program to solve this puzzle. And the code has to run on all of the cases that you're given uh, initially that you can see, and then also a bunch of hidden cases that you can't see. It's got to be correct on everything. It's got to be fast, efficient code, uh, has to be correct, and it can't get any of these cases wrong, even the edge cases. Now, in the past, people have been of varying different skill levels in this, but Google has managed to make an AI that if you rank it relative to all of these competitors, alpha code is better than 72% of people who try and do this competitive programming thing. In an average competition, it ranks about 54th uh, out of 100, if you pick 100 random people. Uh, and the reason that those two numbers are different is because most of the people that do these contests regularly are the people who are really good. So if you include the people that do a contest once in a while, it would beat about 72 people out of 100 people that you randomly pick. Now, that sounds absolutely insane. I spent a bunch of time reading a white paper, and I'll have a link to it in the description if you want to read it. It's a little bit boring, if, unless you like reading technical papers, so I thought making a video would be more interesting, uh, but it certainly has all of the data, and it's very possible that I messed some things up, at least slightly, in my explanation. So, for the more accurate version, just read the text below. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. So, one of the things that I thought was just kind of crazy off the bat um, was what I thought would happen is Google spend a bunch of time and money making a really good data set, and then a bunch of time and energy training some neural network on this data set so that you plug in the problem statement and out pops the C++ code. And that's what you submit to CodeForces. It gets it right like 20% of the time or something. Basically, this AI is able to write code as good as a not-so-smart human, um, but still decent code, and that's what happens. It is nowhere near that smart. It is so much more stupid than that, um, which is a little disappointing. But once you understand what's happening and how many crazy things that people at Google had to do to get this to like actually do anything, it's, it's kind of cool. That's what doesn't happen. In order for me to explain what actually is happening, I think I'm going to need some props. So let's go on a field trip. What do you say? successfully arrived at Louise. TLDR of it is that it's running a neural network. That's the main the main component. And there's a bunch of stuff built on top of that. So the neural network is like a bunch of nodes in your brain. They're like the neurons in your brain. The nodes are connected to each other and you do some training on it. Basically, like you teach it how to read English. You teach it kind of how to read some code. Um, and once you do that, it's like the pre-training step. Then you teach it how to do other stuff. I teach it how to read. All I mean is you keep throwing input at it and you expect certain output. Uh, and this has been done millions and millions and probably billions of times. Um, and you start out with just getting random nonsense at the end, and you, you're like, okay, well, if we want the, this particular answer, let's try and feed that back in and see how you can adjust the weights of the edges accordingly so that over time it starts getting better. So that's your neural network. However, this is kind of a special neural network. It's not just the normal one. This is called an encoder-decoder neural network. And I'll explain what that is with some props. So basically, the way this works is you start with something like this. You've got this prompt. 
a really bad drawing of the Mona Lisa with Sharpie and highlighter. And this is what you want to translate from this description into some code. Now, it turns out this encoder decoder network is the same thing um, Alpha Code uses. It's also used in Google Translate. And the way it works is you start with something like this. Then the computer needs to somehow get this into a different language, whether it's code or Latin or Chinese or whatever. First, you can't just translate word by word into Chinese. It doesn't work like that. First, you have to figure out what does this mean? So you're gonna take this and you can think about it as playing Pictionary. You've got one neural network that looks at this and it tries to come up with exactly what this thing is, which is a really bad drawing of the Mona Lisa using Sharpie and highlighter. Now, once it's got this, we're gonna use a separate neural network to try and figure out what is this, but describe it in Chinese. And then you have a separate neural network to try and do that. So those are the three steps. You go from whatever language to the actual meaning, and then this meaning to this. So in competitive programming, it might be you go from the problem statement to what is the problem actually asking? Like the computer needs to understand the problem statement, solve the problem, get the, the right you know, like idea for what the problem is and how to solve it. And then it needs to turn that idea, that solution into actual code. Those are the two separate steps. And the idea is you train both of these neural networks so that they go both ways. So this is an English one. You can go from English text to this meaning. And then also you can go from this meaning backwards. Uh, and you do that by trying to remove small pieces of this text and trying to figure out, you know, what would be removed. Um, and there are lots of details there. So that's the idea. You've got an encoder here and a decoder here. Um, and just like with Google Translate, this is how this machine learning algorithm is built. The problem is that unlike Google Translate, where you got this answer, and usually, you know, it's good enough, you don't just have a correct solution pop out the other end. Uh, it is very wrong, like not even close. In fact, most of the time that you make something pop out the other end, not only is it not the correct solution, but you know, a large part of the time it doesn't even compile. Once it does that, 99% of the things it writes doesn't pass samples. 99% of the programs it comes up with. So, yeah, <laughs> there's that. On top of that, once it does pass samples, almost all of the programs it writes are wrong. It writes so many wrong programs. And it looks kind of like this. I mean, this is a simplification, right? I've, I've kind of exaggerated how many right answers it gets here for details. Now, it's gonna submit some of these, um, but it's generating like tens of thousands of programs, so it's not gonna submit all of them, but it's gonna submit some of these, and it's gonna submit only the ones that pass samples. So you can imagine I've had a giant pool of all of these cubes. Almost all of them are red. I took 1% of them. These are the ones that pass samples right here. If you just tried to submit a random one of these, you just pick one at random, right? Pick this one. Oh, it was wrong. Surprise, surprise. Most of the time, you're going to get it wrong. They set the restriction of, in contests, they get 10 submissions allowed per problem. Like, if you don't set a limit, on average, it gets it on, like, the 100th submit or something. So, it's very inaccurate, uh, but, like, there are only so many ways of doing it wrong. So, if you keep submitting enough, I guess you get it right. But they set this limitation of you get 10 tries. So that's what we're dealing with. So now that they've had their neural network spit out all of this garbage, most of which is code that just doesn't work, they have to do a bunch of legwork to try and find one of these green cubes. All right, so to try and pick the 10 submissions in a smart way, what it does is it categorizes each of the submissions into different classes, where a class of submissions all will give the same output for any input. So in this case, this class is wrong because it's all red, but everything in this class will have the same wrong answer. It's wrong in the same way for any input. Some, it might get some of the cases right, some of the cases wrong, but every one of these submissions will do it in the same way. Now, keep in mind, it might seem like, okay, there are probably just a whole bunch of things. Is, these are just all the same with different variable names. We've already gotten rid of those. So they were smart enough to do that in the beginning, but even after you've you know done some basic, like, things checked with two programs compiled of the same thing, etc. There's still lots of ways of writing the same wrong solution uh, in two different ways, or the same right solution, right? Or two different solutions that are completely different but end up producing the same output. 
So once we have these classes of submissions, we know there's no sense in making multiple submissions from the same group, right? We don't know whether this is right or wrong, so maybe we'll, we'll guess, we'll pick this one, we'll submit it, see if it's right or wrong. But if it's right, then we're done, and if it's wrong, all of these things are wrong. So by having these classes, we can be a lot smarter about which of these 10 things we pick. We're gonna pick 10 piles here, not pick 10 blocks. The next thing they do is they make this observation, which happens to be true, which is in general, there are, for most competitive programming problems, there are probably a couple ways of doing it right. So this green stack is going to be rather tall. If we're looking at all of the stacks, instead of just picking 10 of them randomly, we'll pick the stacks that are taller. A way of thinking about this is there are probably multiple different ways of doing something right, but if you're gonna make a mistake, chances are it's like a fluke. You did something wrong by accident. And there are a lot of different things you could do wrong. That's why there's so many red piles. But it's unlikely that doing two wrong things will be wrong in the same way. With all of that, they end up getting a pretty good response rate. Um, but there's one part that I've kind of completely left out, which is how do they make these classes in the first place? Right? They don't have the system test data when they're submitting. So you can't categorize each of these blocks into their piles because you don't have the input output data. And the solution to that is they make another neural network. So there's another neural network that'll read the problem, mostly probably read the input section, and it'll generate input data that's probably valid input data. Maybe it's valid, maybe it's not. You can imagine this is a pretty easy neural network to write compared to this monstrosity. But what it's doing is it reads the input data and it tries to come up with cases for it. And those are the tricks they use to go from a totally terrible set of 10 solutions to a set of 10 solutions that works surprisingly well. Although nobody asked, my take on this is I'm a little bit less impressed by alpha code than I had initially expected to be. It kind of feels like it's playing a different game than the one people are. Like, People don't really get 10 different solution ideas to get to code in a contest. As a person, you get maybe like two or three maybe, and the rest of your submits are just minor variations on those ideas. You don't get time to rewrite everything. So that feels like a little bit of a handicap. It feels like it's not quite fair. Um, the fact that 99% of its compiled runs fail samples seems to me to kind of indicate it doesn't really know what it's doing. It feels more like we're creating an AI to play darts. And rather than like finding the dart board and being really good at throwing the dart, what we've created is an AI that just has 50 times as many darts, chucks them all at the wall, and figures out where the dart board is by the sounds the darts make when they hit something. You know, it, it just feels not quite there. Let's do a reality check though. It's not like we're comparing a smart human to an average human. We're comparing an incredibly talented person to a well-organized rock that through sheer effort and perseverance, we have convinced should think and program better than 70% of people. No matter how you spin it, that is incredibly impressive. Honestly, I did not think something like this would exist at least for the next decade. And Google has managed to do it right now. No matter what's inside the box, what's under the hood, how it's doing it, it is very, very impressive. So, you know, it just makes me wonder if in 10 years, just the neural net part of this will be able to do what we all thought Alpha Code was doing today. And once it's able to do that, and it also has all of the other handicaps that come after that, that's when we should be worried. Because that's when it comes for tourists, and that's when it turns from, you know, a gray, maybe a talented green, into deep blue.
The coppers are coming for you, Alpha Code. Better watch out.